So, Jeremy Scott's here to talk about his new book, The Irresistible Mr. Wrong. Uh, an extraordinary character, Jeremy. Um, who was he? He was a Dominican playboy with a taste for polo ponies and Ferraris, but uh, unfortunately no money of his own. So, uh, how did you come across this, this story? While I was an adolescent, um, being educated in a homosexual uh, English public school, Ruby was making news in all the magazines, and he seemed to be... Um, and Ruby is his name, Ruby? Ruby, yes. Ruby Rosa was his name. Everybody called him Ruby. And uh, Ruby appeared to be having um, a glamorous, exciting, wider life that I yearned after myself. And. Uh there are six women on the cover, and it's the title of the book is The Irresistible Must Have Wrong. What was, uh, what was his charm? Um, he had something rather special. Uh, and uh, he married. He married all of these women. He uh, did. He did. He, he, in, uh, he serially married. In fact, the book is really more about the women than about him. Mm. It's, it's, it's a sort of serial biography of five women who serially married the same man. And so who were they? The first was Flor Trujillo, who was the daughter of the president of the island. He was um, one of the great monsters of the 20th century. He, he was an astonishing tyrant, but uh, Ruby said of him that he was the only truly rich man he ever met because he owned a whole country. And so did he, he specialised in rich women, did he? Oh, yes. Yes, he was a professional. Um, and uh, did he treat them well? Did he behave well when he was married to them? He was absolutely professional and proud of uh, what he did. And uh, he behaved very well so long as he was paid. Goodness. And uh, so who came next? Uh, next was Daniel Darieux, who was a... French movie star, established French movie star in Paris at the start of World War II. And um, she, he, he, they made a very glamorous couple. Uh, I'm sure. But um, when, did he, he, when did he hit the big time in terms of um, the heiresses, shall we say? I guess the, the following wife, who was... Uh, Doris Duke, who was the heir to an immense tobacco fortune and, in fact, the richest woman in the world. Um, so he, he, uh, he married her and then got his divorce. Uh, who did he move on to next? He moved on to Zaza Gabor, whom he didn't actually marry. She was the one who got away. And he then, uh, he would like to have married her and they were engaged, but... Uh, as he explained, he'd been offered five million pounds by Barbara Hutton. The Woolworths heiress. The Woolworth heiress, the million dollar baby at <laughs> Woolworth heiress. Um, and then finally, uh, 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 looks like a much younger candidate it was his final. Much younger. She was his sort of retirement wife. And Jeremy, in your book, you have show sort of immense sympathy. Uh, the book is, as you say, about the women, and it poses a very important question. Why on earth did they all marry him? Well, that's the central question that, 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 that uh, occupies the book. But if you want a short answer, I guess they wanted the very best and they could afford it. And this attribute you mentioned earlier, uh, which was of the best, uh, people have been coy about in the past, but we're, we're not bound by that now. What was his, what was his secret? It was um, qu quite a uh, distinguished apparatus he had. Uh, uh, Doris Duke um, said it was the most magnificent penis she had ever seen, six inches in circumference, very much like the last foot of a Louisville slugger baseball bat. How extraordinary. Um, and to finish with, time flies when? When you're spending a rich woman's money, Jeremy Scott, thank you very much indeed.